YouTube, what's good? We're back in this thing. Today we're gonna be going over this clone effect where your subject's masked out and there's a bunch of clones behind them. Sometimes there's some distortion, some stretching, a little bit of movement. I've seen Instagram editors do it, Native do it. It's done in this pure guillotine music video. That's the one we're kind of replicating today, but I'm gonna show you other ways you can do it as well. So it's not exactly like this music video. If you guys haven't seen already, I released my 10K subscriber music video editing contest. Prize pool $750 and you get to edit a little bit of a Matt Ox music video that already came out, some of the footage. It's 4K and 120 frames per second, so some good footage. So if you're interested in entering the competition, it goes on until March 3rd, and I'll have a link in the description and something pop up so you guys can enter that. You definitely still have time. If you're new here, what I do is a lot of tutorials, basically anything to do with the hip hop music scene in the visually creative side. So if you're interested in those kind of things, definitely be sure to subscribe. And if you haven't already, like and comment. It really does help me out and helps grow the community and the channel because it allows YouTube to figure out who to push the content to and just show that this is content that people want to see. So if you could take a second and do that, I would really appreciate it. And if you want to support the channel even more, you can go over to brianelmata.com, check out my texture pack. It helps you get that AUG, Lone Wolf kind of style, paper rip effects and transitions. There's over 210 of them and they're all available in 4K. So if you want to go above and beyond and support the channel, you can go do that as well as get some really high quality digital assets for yourself. With that being said, let's get into the tutorial and kind of break down these effects. So the effect we're going over, I'm going to base mine off this effect right here. So it has the clones, it has some scale wipe and some turbulence displays it's looking like uh, it's a pretty simple effect you just have to know how to basically pre-comp the clips and just do some things that allow you to get this effect without putting in too much work which is actually pretty easy uh they just did it a lot throughout the music video like i had a hard time finding a spot where there wasn't effects on pierre so shout out the editors i know there was three of them i'm not exactly sure all three of their names but i'll have their instagrams linked below so uh go show some love i forgot to do it in the last two videos that i did tutorials on this music video for so uh go over there show some love because these guys really killed it with that being said i do have two more tutorials on this music video already i have the crt effect that you see right here and then this color glow effect that uh is done a little bit throughout the music video so if you want to see either of those i'll have them linked below and i'll have their cards pop up now but yeah so the first thing you're going to do is just go to roto brush up here it's a roto brush tool i'd recommend updating your after effects so you have roto brush 2.0 makes the roto brush a lot easier and it's uh, not in beta anymore so you can do that if you hit alt w it will also bring up the roto brush tool just a shortcut that i figured you guys could know uh, and then click on the layer i already have the spot where i want to do the effect split and then i'm just going to double click and it's going to bring you into a layer instead of the composition over here and then just do a really good job outlining your subject for the first frame and rotor brush should do the rest for you pretty much the whole rest of the frames just gonna make sure i get his legs here fix the jacket a bit and then you can press play here and it should do a good job but i'm gonna go frame by frame just because we have a short amount of frames and uh, i want to make the mask pretty decent and i knew that this was a uh, they already rotor brushed it out once so uh i knew that the background was going to change and most of the time when that stuff kind of happens it tweaks it a little bit, but uh, it still did a pretty good job. And I'm just gonna continue going frame by frame. And then for some reason it stopped on the last frame. So I'm just gonna redo this. It's definitely easier to roto brush when your background is contrast heavy compared to like a bunch of different textures and like lightnesses. With roto brush 2.0, honestly it does a pretty good job. So you can pretty much do it anywhere now. And then once you're done, you can go through and just make sure that you have a decent roto brush. I'd recommend just making sure everything's pretty spot on so it looks the best. And then go ahead and click freeze. And what that's gonna do is just lock in roto brush position. So that way it doesn't move or anything. And then it like also masks out your subject. So if you go over to layer up here and click the X, bring you to the composition and you'll see that your subject's masked out and like i said because it was a roto brush and i downloaded this footage off youtube it will have these harsh edges a little bit so we can go and fix this a little bit but it's still going to look a little weird but it doesn't matter for the sake of tutorial it'll be good if you do it on your own footage and it's like 4k and stuff it'll look a lot better and uh, when they did it, it looked a lot better because their footage was high res yeah that looks like a pretty good mask honestly especially for the tutorial so then what i'm gonna do is select on our layer and click Control d and that's just going to duplicate the layer i'm going to go to the bottom layer and turn off the roto brush so that way bottom layer is the full clip the original clip itself and then the top layer is the roto brush clip then what i'm going to do is go ahead and click Control d on the roto brush clip go to the bottom one press p to bring up position or you could go in and go to transform position and then i'm going to keyframe the position and go i don't know maybe like three four five frames ahead so i think we'll go four or whatever that was and then i'm just going to click and drag it back a little bit back and down and then click Control d and then i just use the bottom layer here that's already has the position open because it's these two clips are exactly the same so it doesn't matter so if you use the bottom layer you don't have to reopen position and you can actually just move this and then again just click and control d you can do as many clones as you want i'm just going to do until i look until something looks good to me control d here drag it out click control d drag it out and then maybe we'll do one more layer and then you can see i already have motion blur enabled but if you don't see that just click toggle switches and modes make sure this is blue up here and then just click and drag on all these layers here and that will add motion blur 
That way it kind of slides out like this. And then to get that effect where it's stretched and there's turbulence displaced on the clones themselves, don't select the top layer, go one below it, and then do everything besides the background layer and the top layer. So basically it'll be a sandwich of pre-comp and then you're gonna go right click and click pre-compose and you can name this like clones. That way you know what that is. And then I always just split this and then delete the beginning and the end of it. I don't know, it's something I do, it doesn't really matter too much. And then you can go to your effects on the right hand side and type in CC scale wipe. And then I like just choosing a position first, dragging the direction, the weight of the clones looks best in my opinion. I'm gonna drag it actually, I'm gonna have it start up and then kind of move around. Then I'm gonna go down here to effects, keyframe all these, maybe make the stretch a little bit more aggressive. Go towards the end, drag the direction just so it moves. So right now it's just like moving a little bit. I think adding a little bit of movement looks always looks good. Maybe drag down the stretch a little bit so it has a almost like an elastic like bounce kind of look. And then I'm gonna go and you can even play with the position of the center. That way you can choose where you want it to affect from. I'm gonna just move it a little bit and then go towards the end, drag the stretch down. You can keyframe it however you want. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing, but I just found this looks kind of cool. So it kind of like bounces back into them. And that looks cool like it is, but I think if you add some turbulence displace, it makes it look a little bit better. So type in turbulence displace and drag that on. Then I like going some like halfway so you can kind of see what you're working with I'm not going to keyframe anything yet maybe turn down the size a little bit and then i'm going to turn the amount up a bit go to the beginning you can keyframe amount size and evolution i might not even keyframe any of the things besides evolution to be honest but that's what i'm gonna do just move it through a little bit that way it just has a little bit of movement throughout the effect i just went ahead and actually turned off the keyframe for amount and size because i noticed i want the size to be a little bit bigger the amount to be a little bit bigger as well you can see in his effect that he has Whoever did this one has the turbulence displaced kind of keyframe the amount and have it, have it go away. You can do that. I'm just showing you how to do it. I, I think this looks cool, so I'm gonna keep it this way. But uh, if you wanted to like replicate this, I think the turbulence displaced is on at first. And then by the time it gets here, it's pretty much just scale wipe. And also they kind of just kept scale wipe pretty aggressive the whole time and then keyframed right here to have it just go away. But I like the way we have ours, that's pretty cool. And if you wanted to, you could even keyframe the clones to go back into uh, Pierre. But I think the way it like has this stretch and warp come in, it's kind of cool that it, like, it almost just looks like it snaps back in. And I can show you guys some other things you can do. Obviously you can add whatever kind of effects you want, glow, flicker, all these other different tools and effects to the clones themselves. But say you wanted to like even move the clones around, cause I know I've seen clips of like clones moving around and kind of like circling the person. If you wanted to do something like that, you could just keyframe each clone to move around. So I'm gonna go to the second to last frame and move all the clones. It's a little bit weird because you don't know where the uh, the top one is because you're in the pre-comp, but it's fine as long as you don't move it too much, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Just make sure you're selected on the right layer when you're dragging. And I'm gonna drag these all up. And obviously there's a harsh edge uh, right here because of just the clip wasn't, didn't have his leg go down any further. So if you don't like that, then uh, then obviously you can do whatever, but I think it looks fine. And then you can see it kind of has that hook up here. And then if you even want, you can highlight all these clips or all the keyframes and click F9. What that's gonna do is easy ease them. So it just kind of adds a little bit of smooth movement between them all. So that looks pretty cool. You can even go into the graph editor over here and highlight all the clips and you can change how they move. So if you wanted it to like come in slow and then move fast, I'm gonna have it do that actually for both of these. So it kind of goes slow and then all happens fast, slow and happens all fast. You can kind of see how that happens. It like It's more aggressive and like not as fluid. I think that looks kind of cool. And then if you go back to the tutorials, you can see what is happening to your effect here. And then what I'm going to do is actually fix the scale wipe because now we did this. So the first effect was pretty cool, but now that it's here, I want it to be scale wiped this way so you don't see the uh, harsh edges. Uh, so I'm going to go to scale wipe over here, drag it down so it's being dragged down and go to the last frame, drag this keyframe over and make sure that the amounts just enough to have them being held out of here. And then I think I'm gonna also fix the turbulence displace cause it's just a little bit much now. You can see what I'm talking about with the first clone since it's like now it's a little weird cause I didn't see the original one. So if you wanted to do this effect right off the bat, what I would do is I would do all the position, like you know how we did the first time when you pre-comped it after you moved them. Uh, since we were just working that way, I figured it was whatever. It's not the biggest deal. But yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. 
Uh, like I said, there's just a bunch of different there's just a bunch of different things you can do to this. You can add flicker to your background ones. You can add glow. You you can even add that colored glow effect that I did in one of the last tutorials on this, like coming out of like some of these guys or something. You could render it out, do the CRT effect on it, because like that's kind of how this one started. It was like CRT at first, and like it's framed in, and then kind of went back out. That looked cool. But yeah, you can combine a bunch of different effects from all these tutorials and, uh, you know, really go crazy with these effects. I think each one of the uh, clone effects that they did in this music video is like a little bit different. So that's what they were doing. I'd recommend you guys do the same. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the effect. If you made it all the way to the end, I really do appreciate you. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help push my channel and build the community. I live stream every Friday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time on Twitch. Uh, so if you want to get your music video watched, your edits watched, and stuff, and kind of just talk with the community. That's always a cool time. We have a decent amount of people who show up every Friday. If you want to support the channel even more, you can go over to brianalmata.com and check out my texture pack. If you haven't already, check out my editing contest if it's still before March 3rd. And if it's not, you can go over there and still download the footage, play around with the, the footage that's given. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. 